request for evidence how do you respond to a request for evidence and how can you just avoid a request for evidence to be sent to you all together in this video we are going to discuss the topic of request for evidence and we are going to make a case study on one of our case my name is Biju Nguanda, my immigration lawyer based here in DC. I do work with individuals across the country and around the world because we're dealing with complex US immigration law cases. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're not new, welcome back. Thank you for subscribing. And please do not forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. If you enjoy the content, please go ahead and share, like, and don't forget to comment below also join me on instagram uh, because we're talking about employment base you can share those content with your friends uh, family members employers of course um, and you can also join uh, us on our private facebook group because we do actually answer questions uh, we answer questions live at least twice a month okay you can post your question there and then trust me we'll get to it um, let's get right into the subject of request for evidence you can avoid a request of evidence to be sent to you clearly if you if you know what is required for your petition you can avoid it especially like with green card let's say you apply for a green card uh, and you know that you have inadmissibility issues well you should put a waiver altogether if that inadmissibility issue is waivable if you have to uh, actually do the examination just put it right there all together everything that is required all the documents just put it file one filing and just wait for an interview and nowadays they're actually bypassing interviews so if you like you might even not get an interview right so if you know what is required you will avoid the uh the request for evidence to be sent to you but most of the time we don't know what is required or maybe we know what is required but we miss out on other stuff okay and then we receive a request for evidence that's why we're gonna do this um study case study it's about adopted children we are gonna talk about adopted children in the context of uh applying with i-130 petition for alien relative we are not on this video talking about uh, the convention of Hague type of adoptions. We are not talking about adoption based on orphans, uh, those applications that you see on USCIS.gov. We are not talking about those. We are only focusing on I-130 when you claim that the child was adopted. How do you have to go about it? You must, first of all, first of all know the requirements, okay? And what are the requirements? Number one, the child must be unmarried under the age of 21 and have been adopted before the child turns 16 and you have been in legal custody and jointly resided with the adopting parent, the child in question, right, has resided with you, okay, for at least two years those are the requirements so we get we just got a request for evidence for this um, adopted child why because those people did it themselves they really didn't know all the requirements they only met one requirement custody legal custody because they had the judgment decree but they didn't know that they had to prove all those other things so we divided in four points right number one legal custody how do you prove it with a judgment decree you have to have a judgment decree to prove that you got legal custody because you went to court and the biological children of those um sorry the biological parents of those children uh basically relinquish their parental rights right that's why you got legal custody in court and you have the judgment and translation if it's not in English. Number two, you have to show proof of joint residence that you live with those uh, adopted children either two years prior adoption or two years after adoption. How do you prove it? 
you can prove it if you if it was abroad you can prove it with uh, affidavits right affidavits of people with personal knowledge uh, of your you adopting those children and living with them at that address you can prove it uh, with that you can show too in the judgment decree that the address in question is is it, it is in the judgment decree but you have to have additional evidence to prove it okay about the residency that you live with that person uh, you can prove it with school um, basically school uh, reports with the address of where you said that you live with the child in question after you adopted the child or before you adopted the child right that you had taken some type of uh, parental control over the child that's something you can prove number three we have to talk about the natural parent of the children like biological children sorry i keep saying biological children biological parent okay we have to talk about them too how they relinquish control so you have to really say that like you have to show actually evidence showing that the parents of the those children don't live with the children okay they live somewhere else with evidence if David will work or if they have a lease agreement with their address it will work you have to show that they don't live together and if you happen to live with the parent uh, because sometimes uh, the, the biological parent of the child in question is a minor they got pregnant when maybe they were 17 and you live with that uh, um, parent in the same house then you have to show that the things that you were doing that showed that you had parental control over the child in question the adopted child okay because you have to talk about natural parent like biological parent of the children you have to be able to show that there's separation and if there's no separation you have to show why okay then lastly if they talk about a late registration birth certificate because sometimes uh, in other countries the child was born and then they got the birth certificate late they did the registration late then you have to prove with all the document showing that uh, the biological uh, parent of the child in question a name on that document you can show uh, records from school old one you can show uh, basically uh, old birth certificate if you can find it right because the registration came about late then you can show um, things from churches like baptism uh, cards stuff like that to really just show that this is the, per the, the the father or the mother of the child in question however because we had a late registration birth um, certificate like the birth certificate was registered late so now we have to prove that of course this is the, the father and this is the mother with all the documents even from school prior to you adopting the child in question so that's how you that's how you respond to a request of evidence right you go into the details of really what they're asking you if they if they're asking about the elements of uh, the requirement of of what you're asking for for example in this case they were asking about uh, adopted uh, child like some requirement were not met when when those people filed their petition so we have to go with element one, element two, element three, and element four, and send all the the evidence so that uh, the petition can get approved. And of course, the petition got approved, right? So this is it for today. If you have a request for evidence, um, a letter, <laughs> so please call my office two zero two seven five one twenty one eighty so we can help you out. Uh, sometimes you just don't take a chance to do it again yourself then you get a second request for evidence and quite frankly if you don't like it at that point they can just deny the case right um, take advantage of this administration leniency so that you can file your paper uh, when you should okay until next time bye bye